Hey everyone and welcome back. So I've got a really quick topic that I want to discuss with you all today and it has to do with the factory panniers for the Royal Enfield Himalayan. Something I started noticing that was happening to a lot of the gear that I was carrying in my panniers is that the edges of the gear were starting to fray simply from the vibration of the bike causing the materials to sort of rub up against the sidewalls of the inside of the pannier. Let me show you an example of what I mean so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So if we go inside my pannier here, you can see I've got a bunch of different things, a bunch of different little baggies, carrying tools and whatnot. Uh, this is the, actually the bag for the tripod and you can see um, down here at the bottom, there's these little holes that have formed in the bag just from it rubbing up against the side of the pannier. Uh, similarly, I've got this little Patagonia bag with a bunch of extra tools in it. You can see some of the sides and edges are starting to fray all simply from rubbing up against the inside uh, metal of the uh, pannier. Here you can see a hole has started to form on the side of this little uh, baggie as well. So I've come up with a pretty simple solution that I'm gonna test and see if it works that I figure I'd share with you all. And that is that I picked up these uh, pieces of foam. So they're sticky on one side, foam, very soft foam on the other. And basically I'm gonna line the inside wall of my pannier with this foam to hopefully at least partially mitigate this problem. Now you can see I've already done this in my other pannier here, which I've got on the ground. Let me show you. Um, if you look inside this pannier, uh, you can see I've already lined the inside wall all the way around with the foam. And so we'll see how that actually holds up. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do it with this other one. And you guys can kind of see the process because of course, the, um, the pieces that I ordered you know, are square <laughs> and they don't exactly fit. So it requires some fancy cutting and trimming. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, show you basically how to line the inside of your pannier with some soft foam. Nothing too fancy or crazy here, but I just figured it was a good tip to share in case some of you are also experiencing this problem. And if you are experiencing this problem and you have better solutions, please do share because I'm generally curious how to avoid this issue. You know, I wanna carry a lot of gear in these panniers, that's what they're for. Uh, but yet, um, I'm having a lot of trouble with uh, simply, simply friction damage due to the sides of the inside of the pannier. So at any rate, I'm gonna go ahead and install those sticky panels and uh, get this thing all squared away and then hopefully test it out once the, uh, the snow finally backs off, which just to give you an idea of what we're experiencing today. Yeah, so much for an early spring. <laughs> That's okay, what are you gonna do? And incidentally, four pieces is just enough to cover the inside of this if you cut everything just right. So I'm using the other one as a guide to make sure uh, I don't screw this up. <laughs> um, it's a little bit tricky getting it just right. So uh, it requires some very delicate cutting. Peeling back just the top and then uh, doing as best I can to sort of Line it up. Oh. Well, that's pretty good, actually. And then slowly working it down. Yeah, that looks great. Oh. All right, so you can see it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. Uh, I've got it down. Essentially, uh, covering this most of this side. Now, obviously, there's still this piece and all the corner pieces. And there's no one really easy way to do it other than to cut a bunch of stuff that fits. This stuff is really sticky, so something to keep in mind. <laughs> Is uh, once it gets uh, once it gets in place, it's really hard to move. All right, so that's pretty good for that corner. All 
right, getting pretty close. Oh, we still got this piece too. Oh, we're gonna have plenty of extra pieces to get full coverage here. All right, we got four corner pieces. We're gonna go ahead and put those babies in and uh, get the corners situated. All right, last one. There she goes, right in the corner there. There's a little, little sliver there on the bottom that did not get fully covered. Maybe I can shift this over a little bit and um, get a small piece in there. I don't, I mean, I feel like if I try to squeeze a piece in there, it's just, it's gonna be so skinny, it's not gonna uh, probably hold up, but I can try. I've got some spare left over. Ooh, you can hear that icy sleet hitting off the garage door. That's, uh, it's quite crazy outside right now. So much for getting out on the bike today. All right, so here you go. I've got my <laughs> cell phone light shining in there so you can kind of see. I mean, again, it's not perfect, um, but I really think it's gonna help mitigate some of the damage that's uh, happening on my, uh, on my equipment. So it looks like I missed a small spot right here. I'll get that really quick, but um, yeah. So um, let me just go ahead and fill it back up and we'll, we'll get it all closed up. So while I've got your attention, I thought I'd show you my new tires. So these are the Mitas E07s. And uh, I'm gonna have them installed sometime mid-April uh, for a couple of adventures I got coming up. And these tires um, overall were rated really good as sort of like all around 50-50 tires. I thought about just getting another pair of uh, Pirellis, but I wanted to try something a little bit more aggressive. And these were reasonably priced and got really good reviews. So I'm excited to try them out. And uh, yeah, so I'll definitely keep you guys in the loop on how that goes. Now these tires, the one thing I've read about these tires that's a little bit of a negative is that because they're tubeless and tube tires, you can use them either way, that they're a little bit difficult to actually get on the rim. Um, you know, which is fine if you're getting them put on in a shop, but if you're up breaking down out in the middle of nowhere and you've got to use your little tire spoons to get them on. Apparently they can be really tough to get on. So uh, hopefully I don't ever have to deal with that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Mitas E07s, excited to try them out. So also one other thing that I would tell you now that I have your attention is that I did get the Brompton out for the first time last week when it was 65 degrees and not snowing. And uh, it's running great. I'm really excited to start commuting on it again. Uh, I've got a little, I did pick up a little, um, cup holder for the handlebars, which is really nice. I'm excited about that. I can finally carry like my phone or my drink or whatever in that little holder. And it's just really becoming a true legitimate commuter bike. So very excited to start riding this regularly. I also, you know, again, I got the bag to go with it. So uh, really looking forward to getting out on the Brompton. I've missed it uh, quite, quite significantly. So. All right, well, that's gonna do it for me today. Hopefully this little hack ends up working out and ends up uh, sparing some of my pannier equipment from any additional friction damage and uh, mitigating the problem to some extent. So I'll certainly report back after I've been out on a few rides to let you know if the foam holds up at all or if it actually works. Uh, and obviously if any of you guys end up trying something like this or have a similar solution, definitely let me know about it. Um, but for the 15 bucks that it cost me to buy the foam on Amazon, I figured it was worth a try. So it's definitely a hack though. So, you know, it's not the prettiest solution, but hey, if it's practical and it's cheap, why not give it a try? So 
Anyway, like I said, that's it for me. I do have quite a few updates that I need to pass along that I'm excited about, but I think I'm gonna wait and do that in the next video since I've got something kind of big planned for the next video. Um, needless to say, I've got quite a few different adventures uh, coming up starting as early as next month in April uh, in all different types too. I've got running adventures, cycling adventures, motorcycle adventures. Some of them you probably already know about like NASMAP, but some of them I haven't really talked about yet. So I'm getting very anxious and impatient, but uh, thankfully we have spring break next week at the university. So I've got a week to sort of think about things and plan some more things out. And, and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So I will share all those details with you guys in the next video, but for now I'm gonna sign off. So take care. Be safe, and hopefully it is not snowing where you are and you can enjoy the outdoors. Take care.